Hi there. A lot of people assume that setting up a video conferencing unit is really complicated. And it's not. Especially if you're not the person who has to set up the video conference. If you're on the receiving end, it's about a two-minute process. And we're going to walk you through that right now. First thing you need to do is set up the room appropriately. So you need to have your video conferencing unit with a projector aimed at a whiteboard or some other blank space where you can project the image and see the other participants. Then you want to set up a table in behind the video conferencing unit and off to the side so that you can point the camera at yourself to participate in the conference. Once you've got that set up, it's time to start hooking things up and turning things on. So, we start with power. This yellow power cord, you'd simply unwind and plug it into the wall. I think everybody knows what a power outlet looks like, so if this goes off screen, not a big deal. Second item of business is to hook up Ethernet. So we unwind the Ethernet cable. Now if you're in one of those schools that uh, is wired with male ends coming out of the wall, you've sometimes got a problem. You'll need to find a gender bender, which is a little white block with two female connectors on either end. All you do then is plug in this into one female jet, steal the cable off a computer and plug it into the other female end, and you've got a connection now from wall to video conferencing unit. If you're in one of those schools, there should be a gender bender on the cart. If not, start asking around. In this case, though, this school's wired for Ethernet, so I'm just going to plug this into the wall. Now we start turning the unit on. We always begin with the UPS, which is the black power supply on the bottom shelf. And we turn it on by pressing the red button. When we do that, we hear a few things start up. For example, if you hear the speakers pop, that's a good sign, because sometimes people will turn the speakers off. If you don't hear them pop, then just make sure that you go and turn them on so that you can hear other people in the conference. Next job will be to turn on the video conferencing unit itself, which is this low slung silver box right here. We turn on the black switch, and you notice that the camera takes a little bit of a spin, kind of like R2-D2 or maybe Linda Blair and the Exorcist. That's a good sign because we know the camera's working. Finally, we have to turn on the projector. We hit the standby or on button, and we should hear the projector fan come on. If you don't, there's also a master switch on the far side of the projector that you may need to flip on first, and then press standby or on. Now, in most cases, if people have left the unit properly, you should see a display of your video conferencing session before it begins. However, if they haven't, you may need to press the input button several times until you see a message that says connecting to video conference and then you're away to the races. Here's where people go wrong. A lot of people think that the next thing they need to do is turn on the computer. And the computer has nothing to do with your video conference. Even if you're setting up the video conference, you don't need to turn this computer on because you can set your video conference up from anywhere. So, the computer stays off, and you wait. If someone else has set up the video conference, you're going to hear this unit ring, much like a telephone, and that'll be your signal that your video conference is ready to go.